your presence here today speaks volumes. You know, a lot of times I hear people say, oh, well, what's the sense of going to a funeral? How does that change things? What difference does it make? It makes a very big difference to the people sitting right here. So on their behalf, I thank you all for being here this morning. My name is John Agrusa, and Rick and I have kind of a unique relationship. You see, his beautiful daughter, Lindsay, married my handsome son, John. <laughs> so in a way, we're kind of like co-dads. That's a relationship you do not get to share with many people in your lifetime. And I'm honored to have had the gift of that relationship with Rick. He was a kind man. He cared about his family. He loved his children, including my son, more than anyone. That's a beautiful gift. I, I said to Matthew and Lindsay already, you know, you can live to be 100 years old, and you can lose everything. You can lose your wealth, you can lose your health, you can lose your mind, you can, you, you can lose everything. But the one thing no one can ever take away from you is that your dad was such a nice man. That's a gift that lasts you a lifetime. And I'm glad God gave you that. So, in the spirit of love and gratitude for Rick's life, together let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our brother Rick has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him now with our prayers. Let us also pray to the Lord for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother, and together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, says the Lord. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. You know, when I stop and think about what that scripture says, it tells us that God the Father, creator of all things, this magnificent earth, everything above it, and everything below, everything to the right and everything to the left. When he created all of that, he created a place for Rick to come back to him and spend all of eternity. That speaks volumes about the love our God has for each and every one of us in a very personal and individual way. Sometimes we think, you know, how could God love each and every one of us that personally, that intimately? Because we cannot comprehend that kind of love or relationship within our own human understanding. But he is beyond our human understanding. That's a very special gift. Just as Rick has been a very special gift to us. This morning, Jason has been kind enough to prepare a couple thoughts and words about his Uncle Rick, and at this time, he'll come forward and share those with all of us. <coughs> Thank you, John. Um, there are people who are so constant in your life, and so present, and so foundational, that they help formulate the person you become. Their influence stretches into all around them, and their traits become recognizable in others. I believe everyone in this room is joined today to celebrate and honor such a person, uh, Richard Allen Panko. Um, Uncle Rick. 
The dedication and love for family and friends that Uncle Rick gave to us over the course of his 70 years is on full display today as we all come together to celebrate his life. My wish today is that we all feel that love, we acknowledge that love that he gave us, and know that his presence will never leave us. As John said, it's a, it's a gift, and it's a gift that um, I've recognized since I was a young, since I was a boy, and um, yeah, I'm confident that um, his spirit will never leave me. Um, I believe he is with us today, and I believe he will be with us always. Uncle Rick was born and raised, not in the original South Detroit of some journey song, but on the very real east side of Detroit. Growing up, playing on the streets, running through the neighborhoods, and finding sports wherever he looked. Early on, uh, the radio crackle of the Tigers game <coughs> would echo through his house as his mom would have the play-by-play -play on in the kitchen. Um, the kids would gather and listen sometimes, but usually it was just on, and daily life would go on all around, but the ball game would be there. The Tigers would be there. It would be a constant. Uncle Rick's love of sports would draw him to um, the Lasky Recreational Center and nearby Jane Field, over on Conant and Davidson. Young Rick would dive headlong into all the sports, all the activities, floor hockey, basketball, and eventually softball. It was during these timeless games of youth, when there's no worries about jobs, or no worries about how you're gonna pay the bills, just the love of the game and the love of hanging out with your buddies. He would, it was during that time that he would forge some of the strongest and longest lasting friendships of his life. To be young, to be athletic, to be free, playing the games he loved alongside lifelong friends. Friends, fortunately, he was able to spend some time with in the past few months. And I know that meant a lot to him. It was, it was during this time when we're young, when nicknames get distributed. <laughs> and little, and this was during this time, that little Rick Panko became Dickie Doo. I just knew, I just realized, that I just found this out recently. He was always Uncle Rick to me, but there was a time in his life when he was Dickie Doo. Um, and I learned this, and I, I've shot hoops with Uncle Rick, played catch with Uncle Rick, and I kind of noticed this about him, but it was confirmed in, in some of the conversations I've had over the last few days that he wasn't the fastest guy. Um, you know, he had these really short, stuttering steps. Um, you know, it kind of looked awkward at times. Um, he kept those strides short, but he always kept going. He was always moving. He was maybe not the fastest, but he was definitely the most durable, kind of an energizer rabbit, the most dependable guy on the floor or on the field. He would be, he would be depended on to give him his best, no matter the score. He was always moving, he was always there, he was always dependable to his teammates. He was a constant. The sports of his childhood continued and he moved from the courts of Lasky to the bowling alleys of the east side of Detroit. <laughs> Bronco Lanes on Nine Mile in particular, but there were many others. Hanging with his boys, bowl, bowling a few frames, having a few pops, and charming the occasional lady. It was through the smoke and clutter of pins that brought a young Kathy Evans into his life. Through friends of friends, it was decided that Dickie Doo and Kathy would make a great couple. <laughs> and you know what? They were right. Somebody back then, uh, could tell, even at that time, that those two deserve, needed to be together. So they were introduced in May and engaged by September. The wedding had to be planned between softball tournaments and bowling leagues, but their love for each other was intense and their life together had begun. It was in those years that Uncle Rick dedicated himself completely to the love of his life and committed to giving her his heart, his support, his love his comfort, his strength. 
In practicality, he gave everything he had. He spoiled her, basically. He spoiled her rotten. Um, I mean, I mean, honestly, I didn't realize this, too. I didn't realize this. I mean, I knew she was spoiled. I knew, I knew she was spoiled. But apparently, she didn't even fill her own gas tank until last year. This is a grown woman. This is a grown woman who didn't even know how to operate a gas pump until last year. Uncle Rick was certain that she or any of his kids would never be without gas in the tank. He was like their own personal OPEC. It was like having marathon oil on speed dial. I can't imagine this. He was that determined, that attentive. He was that devoted. From the day they were married, Rick took care of her, completely took care of her, and was there for her every minute after that. He was a constant. Their growing young family would soon have their first addition. Baby Lindsay was born, and Rick's heart grew 10 sizes. All the love and devotion he now spread between the two girls, all at the center of Rick's universe, a devoted husband, Rick immensely became as devoted a father. When their second star was born, that devotion intensified even more, if you can believe it. Kelly's birth brought another lucky girl into Rick's world, and his heart was so full of love to be overflowing. With the needs of his young and vulnerable baby, Paramount, Rick spent every moment holding her, comforting her, bringing her close to his heart, attending to her needs, and protecting her as only a parent of an ailing child could know. When Kelly left, Rick's huge heart cracked. It was a devastating loss for our family. I know many in this room still hurt from that loss. But for Aunt Kathy and Lindsay and Rick, it literally shattered their world. It was Uncle Rick's love and devotion that kept their family together during that painful time. He became the strength, personified the strength that is necessary when a family loses a child so young. He was the rock, he was the strength, and he loved them all right through. He was a constant. The love persisted and soon their world lit up with the arrival of baby Matt. <laughs> Matthew and Lindsay were loved from the day they were born and that love never ceased or lessened one bit. Uncle Rick was the ideal father and the two kids never went without. Dotted on and showered with love, these two babies grew in very rich soil. Rick was there for them always. And I mean always. Sometimes when somebody needed to run to the store, Rick was going with them. When somebody was just running up to pick up the pizza, Rick was going with them. Rick never felt one of them should be by themselves. So he would go to be with them, to be present, to protect them. Always. He was there. A constant. When Matt was in plays, Uncle Rick was there. When the stage needed construction, Uncle Rick was there. He loved those plays so much. One thing you may not know about Uncle Rick was that he loved musicals. <laughs> I knew he liked, I know, I mean, I know he loved supporting Matt, but, but you know, sometimes, you know, the musicals, you know, they're not everyone's taste. I find them, you know, kind of cool, but Uncle Rick loved them. And um, this is beyond just supporting his son, who he loved immensely. He really loved musicals. Him and Matt would go to all the productions down at the Fisher Theater. Um, even when Aunt Kathy wouldn't go, Uncle Rick would go, and Matt would go, and they would sit and they'd watch uh, Fiddler on the Roof, Les Mis, Phantom of the Opera. He loved them all. He loved sitting alongside Matt and watching those musicals. But Phantom of the Opera was his favorite. He would watch watch the plays on PBS. He'd play the tapes in the car. Um, sadly, he never got to see that last production of Phantom. But next time you see or hear any of those songs, just know that Uncle Rick is sitting there alongside and loving every note. The Panko family grew again when John Agusa married Lindsay and was welcomed with open arms and just as much love by Aunt Kathy and Uncle Rick. 
Not only did Rick and Kathy gain a son-in-law, but with John came the whole Argusa family. Their love for Rick are on display today. And I've, I've honestly, I've never seen two families come together to support each other, like the Pancos and the Argusas have done. Um, Rick loved so much spending time with family. Um, he loved the chili cook-offs. He loved the dream cruise. He loved the cookie exchange. He loved when, you know, the Canadians family would come over and spend time. Um, the preparation for the cookie exchange was something that I never wanted to be a part of. <laughs> wanted to stay clear away from that. Um, and Aunt Kathy was right in the center of all that for many, many years. Um, and I can only imagine. <laughs> but through it all, Uncle Rick was dedicated to that as well and made sure that everything was perfect when, when the family came over. He loved his fur babies. He loved, he loved all the animals and the pets. Um, the kindness he showed to all the creatures were reflective, I believe, of the kindness he showed to all. And that was something that, as a young person, I noticed <coughs> right on. Um, Uncle Rick was one of the kindest people I ever met. And, um, he, and he showed up for everything. And one time, uh, I was in Little League, and uh, I was a very good baseball player, even though I loved baseball. And Uncle Rick was at the game, and I went in the pitch, because, I don't know, I was the only one left. And um, could not find the strike zone, could not find the plate. I think I walked like nine people before my coach, great, you know, took me out. And after the ga game, I'll never forget this, Uncle Rick was like, you know you threw a no-hitter, right? <laughs> Not everyone can say that. So even in, even in the, you know, Uncle Rick was always there. Um, before the internet, there was Uncle Rick, and I saw this just this week, last week. His, his mind was so sharp when it came to anything regarding, like, you know, songs, music, musicals, uh, statistics. I mean, he loved, the guy was incredible when it came to uh, that kind of stuff. The baseball statistics, I mean, it was incredible. Um, I know one of the last, the last conversation I had with him was about the possibility of Miguel Cabrera hitting 500 home runs and getting 3,000 hits. And uh, as always, Uncle Rick had an opinion on it and he shared it, even though it was, it was he struggled to put the words together, but he was confident that uh, Miggy would do it someday. Um, so hopefully, you know, that can happen here um, for Uncle Rick. He was always there. He was a constant. He was helping till the end. He just, he, he, his soul pushed him to help. Lindsay shared a story about taking out the garbage cans and how he would always get up and you know, do what needed to be done. And she could tell that he was losing strength when he, when he couldn't take out the garbage cans anymore. I mean, he was just helping to the end. So I wanna say in closing that we, we should all live with Uncle Rick in our hearts. He's watching over us always. The love he gave us will live on. He lives in our heart always. And when Cabrera does get that 3,000th hit, for that 500 home run, I want us to all celebrate knowing that Uncle Rick is celebrating along with us. I love you, Uncle Rick. Thank you, Jason. That was absolutely beautiful. You know, at the end of one's life, if somebody could say such beautiful things, what an amazing tribute. That is a life well lived. You know, death is a strange emotional phenomenon. We all know we will die. We all know the people we love will someday pass away as well. But yet when it happens, it's very, very
very difficult to process emotionally. Speaking from my own experience, my father was old when he died, and I was more than just a mature man at that point in my life. And my father was sick for 20 years. And when he died, I was absolutely shocked. I was in total <coughs> disbelief. How could my father be dead? How could he be gone? And what would life look like for me moving forward with someone who has been in my life forever? How would I move on? Death is a very complicated emotional experience. But one of the ways I think we can process emotional experiences is through ritualization. What I have here is a little simple stone cross. It is special because it comes from the <coughs> Holy Land. So imagine this piece of stone comes from the part of the world where Jesus lived when he walked amongst us in our human form. Because remember, he was fully human and fully divine. This piece of stone cross has now been separated into two pieces. It's still the same piece of stone, but now it lives apart from itself. If we look at the front of this piece of the stone, it's very rough and scratchy. Much like our life is this side of heaven. Oh, it's a great life, and we are blessed to live where we live and when we live. But there are times in this life that we have worries, pain, suffering, and struggles. And that's what this rough, scratchy surface reminds us of. But if we are hopeful and we are faithful, we can feel confident that when we get to the other side, it is perfectly smooth. No more rough spots. And that's what this piece of stone is. No rough edges, perfectly smooth. That represents the place where Rick now lives. He lives in paradise with the God who created him out of love for the purpose of love. That's what this piece of stone represents. I would like to ask his very immediate family to hold this piece of stone cross in your hand during the service. Just for a few seconds, while you're holding it, perhaps you can say a prayer for Rick. Or maybe if you're so inclined, even place a kiss or your thumbprint on it. This piece of the stone cross will be laid in Rick's casket and rest with him forever. <clears throat> this half of the stone cross, the other half, Kathy, I would like you to have. And on days you're thinking of Rick and missing him, if you hold this in your hand and feel the rough edges, I want you to flip it over and feel the smooth place that Rick now enjoys. And I hope this will bring you peace in the days to come. As Christian people, we believe that in baptism we are united to Christ. And once we are joined to Christ, that union can never be severed. No matter what we say, no matter what we do, no matter what we profess to believe, or not to believe. That union can never be severed. That is a promise that's made in baptism. So today, we bless Rick's body as a reminder of that baptismal promise. We know that Rick was united to Christ, not only in Jesus' miraculous birth, his amazing life, his suffering, his death, but today, we know he is united to our God in the resurrection. So we bless his body in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rick now joins the God who made him out of love for the purpose of love. At this time, I invite Stella to come forward to help us with the prayers of the faithful. My name is Stella, and I am Rick's great niece. To the following intercessions, please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends gathered here today to honor Uncle Rick, may we find comfort in the knowledge of the resurrection. Let us play, pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people who suffer with cancer, 
May God show them his mercy through healing. And for the medical professionals who serve them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving, for the joyful reunion that Uncle Rick is celebrating with his sweet baby Kelly, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you raise the dead to life. Give to Uncle Rick eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the unconditional love that Uncle Rick gave to his family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Stella. That was beautiful. You know, ladies and gentlemen, for a young lady of her age to come forward and pray in front of everyone, with everyone, takes a great amount of courage. I know you just made Uncle Rick smile in heaven. Thank you. Can I have the cross? You know, when Jesus was with his friends, the apostles, you know, they were friends, so they spoke very casually to each other, not the way we sometimes portray it. But for the scripture scholars here today, I do paraphrase it, so I hope this does not offend you. But one day, one of the apostles said, hey, Rabbi, I don't know if he really said, hey, Rabbi, but I'd like to think he did. <laughs> hey, Rabbi, can you teach us to pray? Because we have to understand that in that time and in that place, prayer was almost legalistic. You had to have a particular posture and cover your head. And you had to face a certain direction. There were a lot of rules. But we know now that you do not have to pray like that. We know now that you can pray in your car and in your bed, in the grocery store, wherever you are. So. When the apostle asked Jesus to teach him to pray, Jesus gave us the perfect prayer. The perfect prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father. So now in thanksgiving for Rick, his life, and his family, let us together pray the perfect prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For peace in our world, peace in our mind, and peace in our hearts, let us ask our Blessed Mother for her intercession and pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May Rick's soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude our prayer service for today. At this time, I would invite you to come forward from the back of the room and make a final pass in front of Rick's casket as a sign of love and respect. Thank you. <clears throat> 